Welcome to Palm Springs. I'm here with the champ Paul. Hey. Hi, Emmy. How are you? If you've been interested in having a new dog, just know that they... Well, she's a rescue dog, which is good. Yes. You know, it takes a lot of training and yes. she's learning. She pushes her boundaries. She does. And she's so really cute. She also thinks she's really small. Her. Duke did pass away. I don't think we mentioned that. Yes. Baby Duke did pass away yeah. last year. God, that's so crazy that it's been gone that long. Yeah. Not to get like dark. Is this dark that no, I talk about? I just want to say it. that when you go through something like that, which I, I never had pets growing up, not like dogs and cats, which are just no offense to all pets. All pets mean right. something, but dogs and cats. I think for me at least hold a different place in your heart and I have, I have realized now that Emmy will never replace Duke but she holds like I Duke will always stay here yeah he was but, a special dog but now there's more room in the heart for more animals yeah. you know that wasn't there cat. before and I miss Duke dearly because he was he was such a good he was here every time on Kenny yeah. yeah so but I miss him I well, love always, Emmy. and I love but I can go back and watch old videos oh, and Duke. and or just like he was on the RV trip with us yeah I haven't had a dog since I was younger, so. I didn't even know you had a dog. Growing up, yeah. we always had dogs. Oh. Our dogs were not inside dogs, ever. We yeah. always had them outside, and we have like dog, dog Inside dog dogs are a very new thing. It is, yeah. So like growing up, I don't remember the dogs being inside at all, yeah. and at all. Which, now I would never, I now would never they, think of that. Now they have their own well, spot on the couch. No, Welcome to the dog about, channel. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about why we're here. It's the week before Christmas, Paul has his place here. But we're going to have a pop-up shop tomorrow at Thickest Thieves, which I will link below the video of our pop-up shop now, two years ago, I think, wow. that we had. I like the idea of a pop-up shop. I know I've talked about that before, but I think that's my favorite concept for us. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, we are selling at the Ace Hotel just across the street mm -hmm. at another Mojave Flea, which is the best. They have 75 vendors this time. Yeah. I have no idea how they'll fit them in. But Tense. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I bet so, the tents will line that whole path. Last week I was at a Mojave Flea and I sold at a Mojave Flea in Phoenix with my sister and I was telling Paul, the owner, his name is James, and I read an article about the Mojave Flea. Do an architectural digest actually? No. About his architectural hunt. digest? Yeah. But he has these markets all over the country in New York and Boston yep. and San Upstate Francisco. New York, I think. Mm hmm The Catskills, Brooklyn. Wow. That would be amazing. Yeah. Last week while we were setting up, he gave me two tents because I think someone didn't show up, so he gave me two tents. And I said, thanks James for giving me two tents. And he said, you vintage people with all of your shit. <laughs> I was like, yep. <laughs> Accurate. That is us. Anyhow. Our <laughs> is in the car. Um, <laughs> yeah. But once you package it nicely, or like arrange it in a line, yeah. it looks lovely. That's, that's what we do with ours. I'm getting back into my upcycling which is yeah. what I, how I started doing all this getting more back into that and trying to find things that I can just do like a whole bunch of instead of just like the glassware which has always been fun to make I'm still selling that glassware I started making three years ago like it is still in my car <laughs> out there because people don't replace glassware so I want to learn how to make more things that I can like I said make in mass and then sell a bunch and so why don't I start I guess with that this might have been in your last haul that we did I think I showed these records I definitely did because someone commented when I sang Delta Dawn I found these records and they were 25 cents each but they instead of like you know sometimes you find records there's piles of records and no one's ever heard of the musician or like I wanted records that I could find that would be like the songs people would be aware of like Delta Dawn yeah. which you did not know somebody out there did and they appreciated my singing thank you for that so anyway I found the records and then I, we talked about like what you could do to records and the big predominant thing that was always that was on a lot of youtubers um, channels and things is melting them down to make bowls and I learned very quickly that now I know I need to feel the records before I buy them to do something like this because there's there was something about the thickness of certain ones that they would not melt. Ooh. So I'll show you first. So those bowls, what you do is you take like a, a bakeable bowl, you place the record on top of it, and then as it melts, it actually, for me, it didn't get hot that you couldn't touch it. It was about 225 was the melting point that seemed to work. And then when they melt down, you you can actually just touch it and form it down into this shape. So it's sort of this ribbony shape. And then shape. once it's out, like you have you have seconds to really melt it, like to, to form it, because it starts hardening up. And then you up. just take it out. And you just take it out, let it sit. Since these had a hole in them and a way to sort of make them unique, 
I used epoxy resin and then I used some of those glass paints that I love, the Marabou glass paints to swirl in some patterns. And I'll just show you a couple of my favorite patterns. This one is like a more purpley, it's just, I love this stuff. How many did you make? I made 12. Oh, um, I like that. This one. Yeah, isn't that pretty? I honestly just experimented with different paint colors and swirled them and used my spaghetti. Spaghetti is still the trick du jour with. It looks like an amoeba kind of, yeah. or like a crystal. This is a little lesson that I'm picking up from other sellers. Like these are great, I love them. They took a long time mm -hmm. for them to melt them down and, and more like the learning. Whenever you learn something, it takes a little bit longer. Next time I do it, I'm sure it would take less time. Mm -hmm. So the time obviously has to go into how much you charge for it, but the record itself was 25 cents. And the paint, which can be expensive, I still got Michael's, we had 50% off and I got the resin for like $8. So they're not expensive. I'm gonna put them into some just like box and say like $5 each for a jewelry and call them like jewelry holders or something like yeah. that. I can't be too precious about these things. If I really wanna sell them, like I feel like $5 is like you see this and you're like stocking stuffer, five bucks, sure, great. I think they're cute, I think Pretty they're fun. Cool. Again, just an experiment, but we'll yeah. see how they sell. Maybe in a future video. Remain on the edge <laughs> of your seat until then. But yesterday, whoa. You just bumped the camera. <laughs> whoa, wow. what did you do? <laughs> also, I just wanted to update you. Paul still has lemons Shut just up. back here. <laughs> we have a beautiful bursting lemon tree in our backyard and I bring them out here and don't do much with them. But the fact is like they're there. Lemons freshen up everything. If my husband, call him out right now, <laughs> lovely man, he asked me to pick up lemons at the grocery store. I said, we have a tree <laughs> in the back. I'm not buying a lemon ever again. His business is pair. records and lemons. Records and lemons. During this trip, we have been working on some little projects. It's kind of one of my, I realized one of my favorite things to do is work on things, make crafts, even if they're not for me, just work on something creative with my hands, basically. So yesterday we watched some movies and we both worked on stuff. I decided that I wanted to start selling little scarves, ha handkerchiefs, bandanas, that's what they are. So bandanas, at the Mojave Flea there are going to be some vendors with different bandanas. It's really the packaging that I like and the way that they present them. Every time I go to a thrift store I kind of pass by that section and they're very inexpensive. So to look for some vintage bandanas, scarves, and because I love enamelware I have quite a few enamelware trays and dishes. And Every time I see like enamelware I think of you. Oh, I love it. It's just so clean looking. I came up with a way to package my little band. Well, I'm calling them scarves. I actually label them as scarves. Well, but truly, They're how do you things. tell the difference? They're all things. Can't one be the other? Yeah. Potato, potato? Yeah. So oh. I, I just have a handful. I have one, two, three, four, five. I um, just made them into this little triangle and then tied them here. And I got so these. Cute. I had these little flag. I have a bunch of tags, so I thought these were nice and small enough. I'll show you what I have. So I have this one. This is, I think this is silk. Ugh. Isn't that pretty? It is. And they're mostly, they're like squares. This one is more for the Southwestern crowd. This looks like it's from the 80s probably. And then the polka dots are the ones I like with the that's red sharp. trim. Yeah. Did you and ever then, sell the tennis one that you showed? I brought that to Did Sarah. You? I'll show you. Well, I'll show you in a sec. I haven't tried to sell it. But this is another that I really like. It kind that of- That means, that feels like 80s, that's cool. If this were smaller, I would say it was a pocket square, right? What is the size of a pocket square for a it's suit? It's just like a napkin size. It's just a napkin yeah. size, and then you fold it and put it yeah. in. This looks like the pattern of a pocket square. It's got a grid on it, and it's got the Pendleton colors, and then brown as well. It's quite large. This one is 26 by 27 inches. Wow. This might be my favorite. I've just started to collect them because they're so cheap and they're so easy to collect and they're really, they look really nice yeah. in a little stack. I'm just gonna somehow arrange them on my little, one of my little enamelware trays. This I'm just going to hang up because you've kind of got to see the picture. I did measure all of them and so I'm just gonna hang this one up. Thanks, okay, that's my first. All right, um, for my next one, I'm actually gonna show some just straightforward thrifted stuff. Close your eyes, please. You said you haven't gone thrifting in a while? I haven't, and- Like um, when, when- You can open them now. What was the last time you went thrifting? Uh, it was a month ago, I would say. And it was part of the other show that I produce. We were doing stuff evolved, involving like Goodwill and, fo and found things. So I was shopping for that, but then of course, other stuff caught my eye. This being the thing, these adorable little plates. That's pretty. Little, these little dessert plates where I just saw this pattern 
and they are so simple and I knew buying plates is always risky but I just thought these were just, Very nice. they caught my eye and they were just so pretty. How many plates and what? Six. Six and no just other, this just this yeah. plate. Okay. I thought maybe like, it it's is one of those things that like, ideally you would have the whole set. I mean, not nobody at one of these fairs, I said, like no one's ever said, hey, do you have the whole thing? Like It's about how you set it up yeah. though, because it's going to be New Year's, you set it up like, are these dessert plates, I think? I think so. Yeah, it's got a really nice little design on it. It's called it's Cairo Ceram Tableware. I'm gonna have to ribbon them and put like a little dessert yeah, tag on really them. Yeah, really cute. A lot of be good about tomorrow too is that I feel like we have time tomorrow at we'll be doing the pop up tomorrow where it probably won't be as busy as the, it definitely won't be as busy as the market. So we'll have time to look at our stuff and have almost like a dress rehearsal. And you tell me what I, what what I could do to make these look like festive. Paul has these really pretty and actually last week in a thrift store I found and did not purchase fondue oh, yeah. plates. So they're fondue plates which have, it's you know it's got one main section and then little separated portions. You did sell the ones, in one of your old videos you showed the colored ones. Yeah, but those sold because of the bright colors. We're gonna put other stuff with it yeah. to kind of tell people like what they are. I don't mm -hmm. know if people, I don't know. But I do, I think it's fun to play with it a little bit to see yeah. what happens. Nobody is that committed to fondue, right? If you're gonna do fondue, you're gonna do it once and then be like, that was fun, I'll do it again in five years. Cause it's just, it's too, it's it's Except not. Except growing up every year, it was, I think it was New Year's Eve growing up, my parents and all of their friends would host a fondue party. And yeah. so they'd have different oils. I know cheeses are the thing people think of when they think of fondues, but it was meat. So different oils and broths. And then they'd have all the stuff set up. So then as kids, that's what I remember. Everything comes back around. Maybe it'll come yeah. back around. And if it does, well, it man, am I gonna springs. be happy that I carry those plates around for two and a half years. Well, you just have to give people some ideas yeah. as to how to use them, yeah. I think. But some people have come over and also said about them, oh my God, I have a friend that won't let their food touch. So she would love this. Yeah, kids. And I'm like packaging up for that. them and they're just like, what? You have to close your eyes. And you cannot close your ears too because they don't want you to listen. What? Because I don't want you to hear what I'm doing. Can I look? Yeah. Oh. <gasps> Did you just put that on? Yeah, I did. <laughs> but look, Chic. Well, so I got this. Bon. Friends. Bon. Friends. <laughs> it's hand beaded. I got this Holy in the Halloween section what at are you talking about? This is Goodwill. Hand -beaded. It's hand beaded. Someone hand beaded this? You, If you look it up, it's called, I'll tell you when I take it off what it's called. I think it's from the 80s. <laughs> and it's this long. <laughs> <You think? laughs> I saw someone posting about the market that they're bringing Angela Bauer inspired sweaters. Charles Judith White on Who's the Boss. Did you hear it? I hear it, yes. I got this at a Goodwill in Arizona. Oh. It reminds me of David Bowie's face. Oh, yes, His yes. His makeup. Honestly, like, wear this. How it much is, are you gonna sell this for? Someone is selling this one online for $1,300. So I have it at a very reasonable price. They got it for under ten dollars. It's Judith Ann Plus is the name of the charging. How do you it. find that? Where did you find that? Goodwill. Just a Goodwill. Unbelievable. I, oh, well, I think in Arizona, if you're a thrifter and you really are just a thrifter, and it's so easy, you go. You should do a video about thrifting in Arizona. Yeah, like maybe. Specifically, what makes. Well, this Arizona year better. I wanna. This year I wanna try to vlog a little bit. Bravo. So. Va. Judith Anna Plus. It's called a, a duster coat, I think, but I thought it would be good for New Year's. So that's kind of what I'm focusing on for our sale is New Year's. In this bag are treasures that I found whilst thrifting in Los Alamos. Do you know where Los Alamos is? Texas. Anybody? <laughs> California. <laughs> Um, no, Los Alamos is in California. It's, I heard the Alamo, that's what I yeah. heard. <laughs> it's uh, wine country, close to Santa Barbara, near Los Olivos and Solang, where Sideways took place. It's beautiful, my sister-in-law got married there a few months ago while we were up there. It's a one street town that's like looks like the Old West, they haven't changed much, with all these little vintage antique shops and things like that, and so I wandered into one, and this one guy had a stand of all these like found magazine ads and things like that and I was just like, I'm gonna spend way too much money on things that I claim I'm gonna do something with and then I never will, but I bought them anyway. Three things that really appeal to me are old vintage coffee bags with the coolest pattern. Whoa, what a good idea. So yeah. Can like, we see? Yeah, <laughs> really cool. Um, Farm market brand, are these? They're old coffee Iowa. bags. That's 
crazy. So I don't know what to do with them, but like, I feel like uh, they could be frameable. Well, if I had that type of kitchen, I think I would do... This pop of color in a white kitchen would be like... And they're real tidy. Yeah. They're very tidy looking. I think these Those are really, really yeah. in a white kitchen, framed. So shiny, so like pop. I just love this. This same gentleman. Very nice. Had this I had to get for myself because I. Why don't you put some of that up in your kitchen? Why don't you mind your own business? <laughs> we might, yeah. We have stuff in our kitchen already though. No, I am talking about your kitchen in LA. Our kitchen in LA is too small to hang anything. It's How like, small? It doesn't have walls. It doesn't does, have walls. It does no walls. It's an open air kitchen. <laughs> it's t it's super tiny. You wouldn't know. You never come to visit. When I used to work at Walt Disney World, not sure if you knew that. We don't talk about it very often on this channel. I drove to Virginia and I put my car on a train and the train took my car and I down to Florida because my parents, I don't think, like trusted that I could drive all I, the, the way to Florida. That's the first time I heard of an auto train. We don't it have those such, out here. It's such a waste of money. Like I could have driven the whole way, but anyway, it was actually a lovely ride. Not, um, not by yourself, I don't think it is. To all the Pennsylvania and Virginia people did. Look at what I found. Yes! Isn't that awesome? The auto train! So, like, I love that it has the phone number. Yeah. Oh my gosh, is I love that. This. What is it? You'll never, you'll never drive all the way again. Do they still have the auto train? It looks like a barf bag, I think. I don't know. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it does. <laughs> There's nothing better than framing a barf bag in your. Home. Auto train, East Coast people, you'll know what this is. This next one, I'm definitely doing something with him framing, I think putting here, maybe in the guest room. It's an old drive-in movie schedule, and what's so crazy about it, I you look at these movies, I don't think I've heard of one of them. And sometimes we talk about how like movies today. There's the volume of movies. Like, oh, movies today are so bad or this or that. Like, I think movies have always been bad. <laughs> it's just that we only like remember the good ones. Like, who well, are here's these a Phyllis movies? Stiller one. Sailor the traveling, beware. the traveling sales lady. Sailor, Sailor beware. beware. The bliss of Mrs. Blossom. With Shirley MacLaine. Like, what are these movies? The Pink Jungle. Day of. The With James Garner. Day of the Evil Gun. <laughs> skidoo. It takes two to skidoo. With Carol Channing. I've never these heard of not movies. one of these. Even Paul Newman in The Secret oh, wait. War of guess Harry who's Frigg. Guess who's coming oh, that's to dinner. One. Okay. I thought that was a play. Is it a play? Okay. I think this is just great though. I love like the. That would be cute in the room. I like the colors, the orange. This ones. next thing is actually a gift for you, but I don't think you're gonna want it in a weird way. <laughs> I bought it for you. I bought I it for I will re gift it to one but of you. I bought it for her and I was like, this is the thing with us and like vintage stuff. It's like, I want to make sure it's stuff that you'll actually use or need. And if you say yes, I will, like, I want you to have it, but I want you to also be objective and be like, this will probably just sit in a box somewhere. Oh my gosh. Do you like it? And will you keep it and yes, like do something totally with it? Yes, I keep it. Okay, Cause so. Cause I feel like I just don't want it to, I feel bad that I'm like giving you more stuff. Wait, that's... wait, wait. Yeah. Is this a record? Yeah. In the last haul, I showed the Tiki Enchanted Tiki Room record. Yeah. And I oh, said yeah. I want to frame it. I would frame it. Okay, too. there we go. Yeah. So that's I what I meant totally the whole time, it. actually. Remember that last video, Jackie? I can't believe. And you had the Tiki one? I Disney thought of record. that, and I thought you should frame this one, too. It's got Mary Blair stuff on it. That's what Look I, at that's that. I, that I'm not. Oh, I totally would. Okay, good. Come on, you know me better than that. Okay, maybe I don't. I do love this, by the way. I can't believe you thought I wouldn't. Well, I just didn't, you know what I mean? Like, we both collect. Well, right, but our decor to, styles are very different. Well, that's and what like, I thought of you for that. Yeah, thanks. That's yeah, very wait, kind of you. Can I show something yet or no? Your turn. <laughs> so today, I found this outside of just kidding. 